All right, um, that's it. Uh, we can get started. My name is Pavan Oberoi. Um, I'm part of this company called Epiphany, who is the company behind whiteboard.chat. We are based out of California, mostly in California. There's a one team member that we have in India, but we are in the Bay Area in California. And uh, we created this service in August of last year from pieces of technology that we were making for a, another product. But this is primarily for education. Um, I see some of you on online right now who have actually helped us make this product. Uh, we are we have a really active Facebook group which uh, my, my colleague said will paste a link into where teachers guide us as to how to improve whiteboard.chat. So if you are on Facebook, I recommend you and you like this product and you want to use it, I recommend you join that Facebook group because there's a lot of interaction between teachers who are using it as well as we participate heavily in that. So today's uh, agenda is that I'm going to talk about uh, whiteboard.chat. I'll give you a demonstration of some of the features of it. I'll give you a chance to experience it live as a student, as well as uh, we want to do questions and answers throughout the session. Uh, but because we have so many people, I would request you to please type your questions onto the Zoom chat. And periodically, I'll stop and ask uh, Sid to read out some other questions which are relevant to that particular area that we have covered. And then uh, we'll do what we typically do is that we do the full hour uh, of, of what we want to cover in this hour, but we stay 30 minutes past the hour after the webinar. So if you have something which is more re relevant to you or you want to discuss new features or anything of that sort, we welcome you to stay back after that. Um, where whiteboard.chat fits in in the virtual class ecosystem, most of you already know, it's primarily in the observability and the engagement part where um, whiteboard.chat fits in. Um, it works <coughs> really nicely with Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, any of the other video conferencing technology we are using Zoom right now for this session. It fits really nicely with different LMSs as well. There is a question about Schoology in the thing which we'll try and cover as well, but it fits really nicely. You can take the link from whiteboard.chat, the invite link and place it in any of these LMS systems. You can actually embed whiteboard.chat as an embedded app as well into uh, Canvas, right? Which is pretty cool. So the kids don't even need to leave Canvas to use it. And this is the marquee feature behind whiteboard.chat if you really think about it. It's this ability of the teacher to look over the shoulder of each and every kid at the same time in real time, and then see how they're progressing through the assignment that they have been given. You can observe them, you can engage them, you can join them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, work with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, which we will show you. And you can put them in groups, all of that stuff, right? So this is the marquee feature, which some of the teachers have told us that even when you're in class in person, you can add the most walk around in the classroom and look at one set of kids or a group of kids working together or a single student, but not all at the same time, which is what this uh, technology allows you to do. It's a really brand new platform. It started in, uh, let me mute people, sorry. So, <clears throat> So it started in August of last year. Um, it's growing like crazy. We have 40,000 users uh, using it every day now, all around the world except Iceland. Uh, somehow people in Iceland don't like whiteboard.chat. Uh, and it's, it's like I said, this is our, all thanks to our strong community of teachers. We, it's a free platform. We do not spend any money on marketing, on reach, uh, uh, any of that stuff. It's all through word of mouth. So we are really grateful about this expansion as well um, that is happening with the platform. More and more teachers find value. Today, a teacher emailed me asking me 
uh, I want to pay you guys. Where should I send the money? I said, no, please. This is a free platform, so we don't want that. <laughs> Again, please engage with us if you like this platform. Email us. This is our email feedback <laughs> feedback at whiteboard chat. Follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We upload videos constantly on it, almost on a daily basis. Uh, we'll upload this video as well uh, on YouTube once we are done and join that Facebook group that I'm talking about. Okay, uh, that said, let me jump into the session. So uh, it's a browser-based platform. It's a free platform. You just go to whiteboard.chat. We have an instance that we do for Asia, which is asia.whiteboard.chat, which is separate from this one. There's one in US, East Coast and US West Coast. So there are three instances. You can pick the closest one to you. Uh, it works really well in terms of latency. Uh, we have we are COPPA compliant. We are really, really careful about student privacy. We do not want to um, keep any student records. We do not do any advertising. We do not sell any, sell in any of the teacher or student information to any third party. So you can read through our privacy agreement, our terms of conditions. We have signed multiple uh, agreements with different school districts in the US and in other countries pertaining to privacy as well. So if your uh, district wants us to sign something, we'd be more than happy to do that. That said, uh, there are two modes that whiteboard.chat works in. Uh, there is a teaching mode, which I'll talk about explicitly, and there's a collaborating mode. The collaborating mode is the more simpler mode where everybody ends up on the same board. They can collaborate with each other. They can see what each other uh, is doing. They can also erase each other's work. But what we are going to talk about today is this teaching mode where you can create, assign, and live teach independent student boards or group boards if you choose to. You can easily start doing that by clicking this button. You do not need an account even for a teacher to use the platform unless you want to save your work, which I will show you as well. Right? You get into the platform, you get a board, you can start drawing immediately. Right? So it's very simple to use. You can type anywhere on the screen. So uh, you don't need to place text boxes. You can just type, place your cursor uh, and start typing. The text box comes in on its own. Right? You can resize the text box if you want. Uh, Right, and then it'll stick to that size as well. On the bottom right here is some basic tools where you can change colors. So for, for example, if you change the change color of the pen, you can see actually the whole canvas changes to that color, which some people really like, which some people really hate. There's a setting to turn that off as well. So because we cannot please everybody, but um, now your pen color changes based on that your uh, font color also changes as well. There's an opacity. You can change the thickness of the pen by using the first slider. So if you want to draw thicker, you can use that. If you have, if you want to do a highlighter, for example, you can change the second slider to somewhere in the middle. It becomes an, becomes an uh, highlighter, changes the opacity, right? And the third one is to set the text size um, as well. So you can set the text size to smaller or bigger, as well as you can change fonts from here. So there are about four fonts that we support. So you can change the font to something else if you don't like our default font, which is Chewy, which is a little bit playful as if you're writing on a whiteboard uh, with a pen uh, marker. But you can change that to a more formal font if you choose to. So those are the basic tools here. I'll pause for a second and see Sid, if there are any questions pertaining to this section that we need to cover. Yeah, I think you can keep going, Paul. Okay, thank you. All right, so on the left-hand side, uh, this is the main toolbar, if you will, right? If you open this up, you can see clearly what the tools do, right? Um, there is a hover tip as well. So most of the tools that you want to use are here. There is a text tool, which I just showed you. We have an object eraser as well. So we can erase objects as a whole. I know we cannot erase partial lines, but uh, we are working on that. It's in our backlog, but you can erase whole objects. 
another easy way to get to the eraser so for example if you are typing something or you are writing something right and you want to quickly erase something a way to do that is to right click and drag and that becomes an eraser without you going to the um, toolbar and selecting the eraser from there there is the draw tool which is the paint brush which is what our default tool used to be to start off with right so this is uh, what this does i'll show you the upload file in a second there's a whole bunch of tools in this uh, range icon there's like these are mostly requested by teachers there's a line tool where with which you can draw lines right there is a um circle rectangles right you can do rectangles if you wanted to um, different sizes you can do notes so there is a note um post it note thing which you can draw on or write on um, which is based built into here as well there is a rich text editor so for example if you are writing long paragraphs and you want to um use the rich text editor you can use it from here too it has a little more formatting tools so you can do um headlines you can do bold you can do italics uh, lists and bulleted items so if you're doing like long paragraphs or essays you can use that tool to um write more text right there is a infinite um cloner built in as well so it, to prepare for your lesson this is not meant for students to use per se they can if they want to but this is primarily to prepare for your lesson i'll show you a much easier way for students to infinite clone objects uh, as we progress right so you can use the infinite cloner from here there is um, a dice built in right so you can use the dice there are three dice built in uh, we'll cover more dice gameplay type things in our advanced section which will be we'll do next thursday Right, so we do alternate. Starting from now, we are going to do because we have so many features. We cannot cover everything in one webinar. We'll do one basic and one advanced every alternating Thursdays. So, Pawan, a few questions have come up uh, over the material that you covered so far. So, one was uh, when you start typing in text, do how do you do the shortcut without clicking on the actual TT icons? Yeah. So, uh, my personal favorite tool is the draw tool. so what i do is that if you click anywhere on the screen you can just start typing with your keyboard you don't need to click anything else just start typing right and it will put the text box there for you as you type okay uh, another question was how do you re- how did you resize that text box uh okay so uh, one way to edit the text so you can just double click it or right click it you can say edit text right it will take you back to the text you were editing right um um it, it even if you want to like for example it it saves i think one of the teachers on this webinar asked for this feature but it saves the color uh of the text that you were putting in but you can track the right corner to resize it and it will remember the size of the text box that you have put right and it remembers the color as well and the font that it was using okay and uh, can you clone to the next page uh are not currently you cannot clone objects copy paste objects onto the next page you can copy the whole page which i will show you as well in a bit okay a few other questions but i think you should keep going and we'll cover it when the topic comes up okay uh so i showed you the cloner uh, there's a easy way to clear the screen if you clear this it will clear everything on the canvas right uh and uh, there is a way to embed an external link so for example if you want to put a link for students to go to another page in this book you can do multiple pages in this uh, whiteboard dot chat as well and this page number 1 i'll show you multiple pages or an external website so if i want to put a link to let's say google.com i can put that here and it becomes a link and then uh, kids and the kids can just click that i'm sorry i'm going to mute Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So yeah, you click this; it will open it in a different window. 
um, you can also do okay sorry about that i pushed one person out who kept on beauty all right so yeah so like you can put a link to an external website very easily you can erase the link by using the eraser most of the objects that you put on the whiteboard you can just use the eraser and it'll erase it except for the dice right there's a compass built in if you want to do constructions it you can use that you can make the radius bigger or smaller you can draw circles arches whatever else you want to do right uh, there is a math editor built in which is quite popular with our math teachers which you can use to write really complex um, equations you can do different symbols right you can do um, whatever else so it, it's a really complex math editor there under the help here right you can look at help go to maths input guide and it will show you a page where you can type different type how to type different quadratic equations polynomials fractions summations integrals whatever else have you right it's it's quite interesting to use the math editor as well uh there is a point a couple of pointers we recently added there's a snake pointer which is my favorite if you want to highlight something on a kids board right you can use the snake some teachers told me that if this is very um, healing as well to watch the snake go around if you are not fond of the snake there is another spotlight pointer as well which you can highlight the certain sections to the kids really easily um there is a couple of signaling for students as well so we have a students no, no, let me get this so if if i want to put a stoplight which uh, i can put on my board uh, and the students have an option to say how well they are understanding the lesson they can put like uh, a light on their board which you can watch in the grid view say hey i am understanding this really well or i am not understanding that really well there's a new one that we re recently added again it was from a teacher who is with us today i think um is from uh, a thumb signal they can say thumbs up sideways or thumbs down right now we is not quite working so i'm not going to show you and then there's a graphing calculator so we we used the geogebra uh, graphing calculator and we embedded that into whiteboard.chat too which i think i'm not going to show you in this lesson because it's more advanced we'll show you that in a different in the advanced lesson and this is for more more for the younger kids where they don't have the ability if you want them to write in a certain way you can put a text box here right so using a text box you can just put a text box it's a like reg a regular text box where they can just click and type they don't need to know anything else and they can just keep typing using the text box and it auto edits you don't have to right click and edit and any of that stuff so it's really easy for you to place text boxes on your screen Okay, said you had uh, questions. Yes, couple of questions about the stoplight. One was, uh, can each student get their own stoplight? Yes, so I'll I'll show you the stoplight once I invite the students. Okay, and uh, uh, can the stoplight be rotated uh, sideways? Uh, good question. It can. I think you can rotate it. it using the rotate tool. You can. I yeah, you can rotate. You can. yeah so any of the objects so they let me introduce you to, to the select tool the select tool is a special tool where you can do several things you can animate objects which i will show you as well you can delete them you can move them you can resize them i don't recommend using this for resize but you can ro rotate them as well right so you can actually rotate um, your know, stoplight like that if you want it to okay right? so most of the objects you can move around using the uh, select tool you can also do flip them horizontally vertically you can lock objects so students can never uh, access or delete objects that the teachers put in but you can prevent them from accidental deletion from yourself as well so you can lock objects i'll show you these two students can move and clone in a bit you can fix the size so even if you cannot resize it accidentally or if you give the ability for the student 
to move an object or clone an object, even then they cannot resize it. And then I'll show you what this uh, add to palette means in a, in a bit. And then you can see who actually updated the last object. So if the kids are uh, working together on a group board, you can still go and see who, who which student actually updated it. There's one question about the post-it note spawn. Uh, can you change the color of those notes? Uh, no, I think maybe in every webinar we have had, we have okay. had teachers asking for different colors, post-it notes, we will add them this time. So I promise. <laughs> and regarding the calculator, is there a basic calculator in there? Uh, no, we don't have a basic calculator. The only one is this, the funky uh, GeoGebra one. We can add a, hmm, basic calculator too, but this can do five plus five equals 10. You can do operations like that with it too, right? If you wanted to, but this is super complex. I don't even know how to use this 3D planes and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, one question about the text box uh, for the younger kids, will it expand as the student types in or would you need to Will it be limited to the size you placed on the board? No, it will be limited to the size of the board that you placed in. Okay, I think you keep going now. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, so I'll let me erase this, all of this. I think this is the basic stuff. So now when you're um, starting to prepare for your lesson, one easy way to is, to is upload a multi-page PDF, which most teachers do, right? You can upload it from Google Drive. Uh, the Google Drive thing is, still not approved from Google. So I recommend just sticking with the computer portion right now, right? So you just look for a multi-page PDF. Like I have this, it can be a slide, Google slides converted to PDF or it can be a lesson converted to PDF like I'm doing, right? So this has, uh, this PDF that I uploaded has three pages, right? So this is page number one, right? And then there's page number two, right? So each, page in the PDF becomes a page in whiteboard.chart. So you can actually see this one, two, three, three pages here, right? So it becomes three pages. You can open the sidebar if you wanted to as well. So you can actually see all your pages really quickly from here too. There are some other operations. This, this is still in beta. So please be careful with this feature, uh, but you can uh, delete pages. You can duplicate pages. You can hide pages. Uh, from the sidebar as well. So you, if you want, if, if the kids are, if you're not, if you have an answer key on page number two, you can hide it such that they go from one to three, and then you can unhide it later on um, when they're ready for uh, a lesson themselves, right? Um, so, I, so I prepared for my lesson, I've uh, uploaded the worksheet. So I'm going to invite the students. So invite the students, you click this button on the top right, which says invite. This is also important. Please make sure you use the invite button to invite the students and not send them this URL, right? So the kids have three ways. One is that they, if they have an iPad, I, I saw somebody was asking, they can just scan the IR code with their iPad right, right here. They don't even need to type anything with the camera, it will open up uh, on the iPad itself, right? Um, you can copy this classroom code. You can read this out to the kids. They can type it on uh, whiteboard.chat directly to login or what most teachers do is copy this link to this board and they put this link in their LMS system or their calendar or their bit emoji classroom or even chat. Right? So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, invite uh, Sid as well. So he can participate as a student along with me on this board. And I'll also open another incognito mode window. So you can see side by side what a student experience looks like, right? So this second window here is the student, right? So I'm going to invite the student. So when the students log in for the first time to whiteboard.chat, they'll be asked for an identifier. You can give it any name, right? And the name of the student, an ID, whatever else you want to. And that's just to identify the student to the teacher. Right? And they get a copy of that board, right? And they can start typing on it. They can start working with their pen on it. Whatever tools you have given them access to, they can start using right away, right? And this is the cool part. So you as a teacher, you can actually open the grid view. And what that allows you to do, let me resize this. Uh, 
right? So uh, you can see the whole classroom live as they're working in, on their assignment, right? So you can see as they're progressing through the assignment, this kid, this student, which is on the right, the yellow one is drawing circles. You can see them, right? Even if they go to a different page. So if they will go to page number two, for example, right? You can see their, the camera that is on top of their shoulder updates to that, right? And you as a teacher have the ability to join them on their board, right? As they're working through their assignment, you can join them and see, you can see my mouse there. You can say, yeah, this is a good job, right? Um, I can type, I can give you a sticker. I'll, I'll show you some of these sticker things uh, in more detail, but I can give you a sticker and you did really well. Right? and then go back to the top of the class or go to the grid view to watch the rest of the kids, right? So this is really useful. You can watch as the students are progressing through their assignments, what are they doing, where are they struggling and uh, help them in scenarios where uh, they need help. So I think I'm gonna stop here for a second and see if Sid has questions. Yeah, Pansu, uh, could you help answer the stoplight with the students? Yes, sure. Okay, so let me put a cool stoplight here uh, on this thing. So I, I have to make sure I'm the on the instructor board. So this is uh, important. I also make a lot of mistakes here to make the top shows you which board you're on. So you be careful that you're on the instructor board when you're changing stuff. And whatever you do on the instructor board by default gets replicated immediately to the student boards as well, right? You can stop that. If you want to, you can say toggle, toggle replication to students. So if you want to use your board for um, solving problems, you can do that, right? Or you can um, send it right away. So I'll show you the stoplight here. So I put the stoplight here. I can use the move and resize tool. This is another one of my favorite tools, the move and resize tool. You click on the black part of this stoplight and you can move it to a different part of the screen, right? And now the students have it on their board automatically. I just put the stoplight on the teacher's board. Right now, all the students have it on their board. Right now, if we see uh, the students can just click, hey, I cannot understand what the teacher is talking about. And you can see it on the grid view. Look, this kid is having problems with this thing. Right? Or if uh, Praveen uh, and Sid can click this, they, you can see what how they are doing as well. Right? And they can change by clicking the different lights, they can keep changing the color as to what's going on. So students don't need to put another stoplight per se, they just need to click the button to say how well they're understanding a problem. Right. Uh, would you be able to show how you cleared the board again, Pavan, please? Yes, so there's a button here, so it says clear. You just hit that and it'll clear the uh, board for you. You can lock your object. So for example, I don't want to accidentally delete my lesson, so I'll lock that. And then if I clear it, it will clear all of the objects from the teacher board. But even from the kids board, it will clear it, right? Because they're uh, replicated onto the key, uh, um, student board. Unless, so unless the student clears it. So if I, if this is the student board and the student hits the clear or the eraser, it'll just clear what they did. It never deletes the objects that the teachers put on their board, right? So that never happens. Okay. And uh, how were you, uh, would you, are you able to change the grid view size? Yes, so you can hit the grid view. You can change, there are grid view options here. So you can say, hey, I want a four by five grid, which means like 20 students to a page. You can do multiple pages of this. I, th I saw another question in the registration where you, if you have more than 20 students, how do you go through? So you can just go to the next page, you'll see the next 20 and so forth. And um, some teachers recently asked us, if you have two monitors, you can actually place two grid views side by side, or you can place a grid view on a browser window, you can place another uh, working board on a, another window, and you can continue to work uh, with the students that way too. Okay, uh, can you show again how to stop the application from the instructor board to the student board? Sure, uh, so uh, let me go back to the, uh, instructor board, right? So this is make sure it's on the instructor board. Right now, if I say I'm drawing the star here, you see it shows up on the right hand side, which is the student board. I don't want that to happen. So I can just, just say toggle replication to students. And this thing pops up, which says real time replication disabled, 
Now let me just change the color uh, to something else, right? So let's say I'm using this color and I draw another star. You see that never shows up here, right? So whatever I do now is not being replicated to the students. And if I turn on replication again, which means turn off this feature, then whatever I do will start showing up there. But the objects that I replicate uh, drew when it was turned off do not show up. I can move them a little bit and then they will show up, but um, by default, they will not show up unless you do anything. Uh, sorry, yeah, one question about the grid view. Can the students be um, sorted alphabetically? Uh, yeah, so we recently added this feature where you can do a lot of things with the grid view. I was expecting it to cover in the advanced okay. course, but, but I think we can show that really quickly. So uh, we, you click these three buttons, you say open class boards, right? And you can say make grid alphabetical, right? And it'll make the grid view alphabetical from that point onwards, right? So um, if I go back to the grid view, now everything is alphabetical. I can even hide students in the grid view if they are done or I can rearrange it myself, just change this index to whatever order I want to, right? So for example, I don't want to see the teacher view. I put a zero, right? I want to see Sid as the first one and I want to see uh, Praveen as a second board, right? So I can change the order um, in whichever order I want to and it will change the order in the grid view from that point onwards. Right, so now you see there's no teacher view set as the first board and so forth. So I can change that really easily. Okay. And if you're using a, a, a co-teacher co to help you in the class, is there a way to choose certain kids to be available only on for one teacher versus the other? Uh, no, so you, the teachers have to do this themselves, right? So you can just figure out, okay, first 10 you take, but you can add co-teachers. So let's first show you how to add co-teachers. Right? So if you click this button, you can see, you can make somebody else a co-teacher. For example, if the student needs, to, the students can never see each other's work, right? They don't have access to grade view. They don't even see who are the other participants in the class, right? So you can make another a participant, a co-teacher by clicking this button. And then from that point onwards, this person has the same uh, abilities as a teacher, right? So they can see the grade view they can see who's asking for help. Uh, the way students ask for help is they can raise their hand. Uh, I will show you how. And you can just click the button and it'll take you to their page automatically, right? So it'll take you to the, their page where they're asking for help, right? They can, um, the co-teacher can go back to the instructor view. They can go back to their book. This is where there is a difference between a book and a, um, student view so and then you are done you can do undo te teacher and this person has gone back to being a student this is how you raise the hand from a student perspective you click this button you can do two things you can say i raise my hand if i want help or you can signal to the teacher i finished my work right and it shows up in a chronological order as to who finished their work in what order right and you can just go to that board and really do corrections on their board saying, yeah, they finished. this is the first student to finish their work. This is the second student and so forth. So it automatically does that for you as well. Um, yeah, keep going. Pa. Okay, thank you. You can do other things from this um, avatar menu as well. You can showcase a student's work. For example, if you think Sid is doing a really good job, you hit this button and everybody's work boards get updated to Sid's board, right? So you can see, but his name is hidden. So you don't know whose work is being showcased, but you can see that the uh, showcasing is going on. And to turn this off, you can just turn this off uh, and then the students go back to their individual, individual boards, right? You can do uh, create group boards, which I'll show you in a bit as well. You can set up, you can lock your class. So for example, if you're demonstrating something and you don't want the kids doodling around, you can lock the class, right? So the kids don't have the ability to write on it anymore. Or if you're doing a timed assessment, you can, after the time runs out, you can lock it. The students have a read-only view. The students can get back to their boards anytime. They just need to click that link, the invite link that I showed you in the beginning, and they can get back to their boards, right? Uh, so they can see it in a read-only mode when you put the answer keys or you give them grades, all of that stuff, right? You can just um, lock the board for that. 
or you can log a single page. So if you're going page by page, you want to, oh, we finished with page number one, let me lock it, now go to page number two and so forth, you can do that as well. The third thing you can do is follow teacher, where if you want the kids to follow your page number, if you're on page one, you want to make sure everybody's on page nine. And when you're on page two, everybody's on page two and so forth. So you can turn that feature on as well, where they follow it. And they can turn it off by clicking the lock icon. I found a few questions about the co-teacher. Okay, is there a way to permanently have one individual as a co-teacher so they don't have to add a, make them a co-teacher on every board? So what you can do is that um, we don't like to save any personal information, but there is a way to click this icon and say, show co-teacher invite, right? And you can directly send this invite to your principal or your co-teacher. So they don't even need to, you don't need to do anything. It's like an, this is more for observations when a principal wants to walk into a classroom and see what the rest of the class is doing. They can just click the link, walk into the classroom, see the grid view, see the teaching and go out. So not to disrupt the class per se. Right? And you can use that for the same way for um, sending invites to core teachers as well. Um, so I think the other thing I want to show you, which is really cool is this uh, chat that we have built in. It helps, so you can enable chat. It's a one-to-many chat where the, whatever teacher types only goes to the students and whatever the students type only goes back to the teacher, right? But the cool part about this chat is the students can select their language. They can say, hey, I want to understand, I don't understand English. I want to uh, chat in Spanish, right? And they can select their language. And when the um, teacher says something, right? the chat for only for that student it automatically translates the language for them into their language right and they can do it vice versa too so when the teacher can select english as their language and when they type in spanish or in um, in chinese or in hindi whatever language it gets translated back to the teacher's language so you can communicate students who do not quite comprehend the same language as you do at this time, right? So that's the cool part. And you can clear the chat. Again, this is a fairly new ad. Again, by going here, you can say, delete the chat and it will delete all the chat uh, that happened for privacy reasons, right? Uh, the other thing I'll show you is group boards. So you can actually create group boards for group activities. So you can click this button. There are three ways to create group boards, but I'll show you the one, um, the other ones we'll show in the advance webinar, but this is the simplest one where you go to the group, group, you select the students you want in the group, right? You move them to the right, they go to the right, you give the group a name, right? And that's it. So that will create the group board where all the students are on the same page now, right? So they can draw, um, they can write on each other uh, on the same board. They can see, they can collaborate with each other right on the same board. Right? But even here, if I want to erase my drawings, I can, but I cannot erase other kids' drawings uh, even on the group board, right? So you can do group games, uh, like you can put a spinner. I'll show you how to put spinners and stuff also in a second, but you can do a lot more stuff on the group boards as well. So that's useful for kids to work with each other on a group board. So- um, Juan, could, you sh could you show the group board uh, again part? I think some people missed it. So um, what you do is you let me delete this group board. Once you delete the group activity, what happens is everybody goes back to their individual boards again, but uh, the group boards are all saved. All of the work that you're doing on whiteboard.chat gets automatically saved with the teacher. So the teacher always has access to all of the work, which I will show you in a second as well, right? So, um, uh, but to create a group, so let me do it this uh, a slightly different way. Right, let me put a spinner so I can show off some other features as well. So you click this palette, this palette there's two things. It picks a simple color picker for younger kids, as well as it has a whole bunch of different manipulators or objects, library objects that you can think about, right? What I'm going to pick is like a spinner from here, right? So this spinner is a customizable spinner. So where you can put different things, uh, on it, right? Right, you can customize it. And now 
on every kids page now if i create a group board let's say now i uh, i'll create a group board so i say click this avatar menu here you can say create group board right again pick the students that you want move them to the right right they are all part of this group and then give this group a name right and then they all end up on the group board so if i go to page number 4 for example right so uh, sid and praveen can you guys go to page number 4 too please right and then you can see all the kids are on the group board and they can actually spin the spinner all of them can spin the spinner and play group games on it as well if they can do dice they can do spinners they can do any other objects and you can see that if somebody else would click the spinner i can see who who spun the spinner on the group board as well right so they can do a lot of different stuff uh, on the group board and then once you're done with the activity again you can delete it and then they go back to their individual boards so upon this question about the uh, stickers and the palette panel so maybe you want to take that and yes. just just a quick time check to if you want to invite <laughs> teachers i know okay so uh, let, let's do the palette thing and then we can invite the teachers okay so there are multiple different things that uh, this palette can do so uh, let, let's quickly go through these so first of all let me show you grids right so there are grids that are built in so like for example there's a built in grid here uh, there's a big grid where it auto aligns stuff into it so if you are doing math for example or you are doing division you can create lessons really easily out of it and then when the kids go to uh, that page they can just select and type um, their answers without putting any objects and if i were to <laughs> okay but yeah so they they can uh, type on the grid really easily right there are other grids built in there is a handwriting grid there is a college line grid where you can again this also aligns automatically so whatever you put in here it you can keep typing long sentences and it will keep aligning stuff really nicely for you right there is a coordinate plane built in uh, as well so which you can to use to um and there's a positive coordinate plane there's a primary line paper there's a is even a music sheet so teachers love music sheets the music teachers also love this right uh, and then you can use objects from our palette so this palette has a whole library of things right you can have we have math symbols for younger kids if you want to right we have letters of the alphabet we have music uh music stuff that you can put on we have alphabets right we have like i said we have letters of the alphabet lower case upper case numbers magnetic letters right <clears throat> we have uh, manipulators which a lot of teachers love right so you have 100 blocks like 10 blocks you have uh, protractors you have rulers you have number lines we have 10 frames number bonds place value charts right um fraction tiles and it literally takes us like 10 minutes to put new objects into our palette so if you think something is missing you you can send it to us or i'll show you how you can add it yourself we have 3d shapes in here right if you have cones uh, spheres right we have uh, reward stickers for people to give out so you have game stickers we have a us currency we have currencies of different parts of the world right coins um, bills right again we have us currency uk currency australia eu canadian we have chemistry stickers where you can do chemistry um, atom constructions we have russian alphabet french alphabet hindi we have different animals cute animals if you want to teach kids about animals and um, insects and so forth we do seasonal stickers as well so we have christmas new year hanukkah stickers here, here. we have thinking maps that we recently added right so we can do use those as well uh, for your lessons and it's if if something is missing it's super easy for you to add your own objects into the palette right so for example if i just go if i want to have a image of uh, the mandalorian right i can just say hey i want a mandalorian in my or i i can use a bit emoji right so i can paste the copy the image paste it here and say right click this and say add to palette right and this becomes my personal 
uh, I can go to my objects and you can actually find that, hey, Mando is part of this now, right? So I can use it for my lessons subsequently and this becomes part of my library to use more and more. And you can search through the palette because we have over 1000 different things. So you can search for stuff here and it will show you uh, what different options you have for uh, searching stuff. You can put your bit emojis, you can put whatever else you want into your own personal palette directly. Um, I think that covers most of the things in the palette. Uh, let me show you the timer really quickly as well. So we have uh, different types of timers built in. There's a simple timer, which you can just say, everybody has five minutes to do this work. It'll show up on everybody's page. You can clear it by clicking this. Right. Or you can do a per student timer when students join, the timer only starts then and keeps running. Or you can set an expiry. You can lock the boards after the timer finishes. So it auto locks out on its own. The teacher can unlock it, but it auto locks it. So there are several different things you can do with the timers for testing as well, uh, doing tests as well. <clears throat> and uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to send you a, diff a, a bingo board. So there's a new a different way to upload a uh, object on the whiteboard.chat. So I'll start a new board, right? And then I'll upload. <clears throat> so, so I have this special PDF. What this PDF does is that each page in the PDF has a different bingo tile and you can, you can create this PDF really easily. Online, there are services which create this free bingo tiles. You can upload this a special thing in whiteboard.chat by using <coughs> in this manage book, you can say upload bingo, right? And then you just look for that bingo tile uh, book that the PDF file and you upload it. And once you do that, what whiteboard.chat does is that it knows that look, there are, uh, this is a bingo tile and each person will get a random tile out of it. Uh, each participant gets a random tile out of it. Right, so they'll get a random tile out of this bingo tile. You see, this is different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share this with you guys. So you can experience this as a, as a, as a student and you can play along with us, right? I'm gonna put this on uh, the Zoom chat and you can just click that link. We can support up to hundred students per port. Um, so that's what this is. And you can experience this live. You can draw on it and you can watch in the grid view you can watch all the students playing bingo live, right? You can see who's winning, who's not winning, who's not doing so well, uh, where, who needs help. And then you can actually call out the numbers or cheat as you choose to see fit, right? Um, there are some other features I'll talk about while you load this. One is a really cool thing where you can use the webcam. So you can add media directly from the kids web webcam, right? So if they're doing, for example, work on a piece of paper, you can actually, take a picture right right from the whiteboard.chat and upload it. And then you can see all the kids' pictures in the grid view as well. You can see everything that is on the grid view. You can join that board. You can see this is the student that joined. I can join their board and do the corrections on their board on their physical picture. Right? If you want them to read out, you can embed audio video directly onto the whiteboard.chat through the webcam as well. So you can talk or they can record their video recording. So if I were to, um, uh, you have to enable audio, but essentially uh, you can just say, this is my hello, hello, hello. And then you can just save it and it comes up here and you can go as a teacher and play back their audio as to what they read, right? Same with video as well. You can also embed um, YouTube videos onto whiteboard.chat. So if you have a YouTube video, you can embed that right here. Right, you can go to YouTube, find your uh, favorite YouTube video. Uh, this is not what I wanted to do. Okay, I don't want trending. Okay, well, uh, let me pick one of mine. Okay, so let's pick this one, right? And then you can put the URL here. You say, hey, I want to, for the kids to start watching this video from second number five to second number 10, right? And that's it. So, and then from that point onwards, the YouTube video gets embedded on all of your boards. If you go to page number two on your 
uh, whiteboards, you can see the embedded YouTube video. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing this on the student board again. See, this is the same mistake I do all the time. So let me do that one more time. Uh, so you go to tools, you go to tools, you say YouTube, you put it here, put the URL, say time start five and 10, and that's it. Right, so now if you go to your page number two, you all of you guys should be able to see the YouTube video embedded right there. And you can do the lesson on the side as to what the kids want to do after they watch the YouTube video. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for a second and see if there are questions. Yeah, so, and so there's one question about uh, students when they sign, when they join, when they click on the join URL, some of them get requested. Uh, sorry, qu sorry. Oh, sorry, um, I didn't realize I was muted. Yeah, so the question was about uh, when students join in, uh, when they click on the join URL, some so, of them get... Wait, set, I'm getting another... Are you getting? Okay, sorry about that. My YouTube was playing, so I'm sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the question was about when students join in, when they click on the join URL, some of them get requested on, uh, to enter their name and some of them get uh, requested to enter a sign in. Why is that happening? So so this is, uh, so you need to be careful about this, especially if you use the community boards, right? Um, what happens is that there's a setting in the settings menu. Let me explain the settings menu a little bit quick, quick, quickly. If you click the gear, you can say only logged in users can join board. If that is check marked, what happens is that students will be forced to use a validated email to join your board. Right? So you be careful that is not checked because uh, that will impact whether they need to log in or not log in. Okay. Uh, there's a question about uh, page numbers. How many pages can we have in a single board? I think right now we can do up to 125 pages on a single board, right? Um, um, the PDFs are limited to 40 pages only, uh, but we can change that. All of these are changeable if you reach out to us, if you see okay. anything different. Uh, is the palette available to the students and is it uh, possible to make it unavailable to them? Yeah, so right now the palette is available to the students. Uh, several teachers have asked us for the ability for the teachers to pick what tools are available to the students. We will add that. Uh, right now it's not there. So. Okay. Uh, would you be able to show how to use the manage boards? Yes, sure. So in the, uh, so this is a good question. So uh, if you click this, all of the work that you do gets automatically saved in your manage boards, right? You can go see the whole classroom, all of the work that the children are doing in that classroom in this manage book, right? You can open any of these boards if you click the plus icon. Right, the classroom boards. You can see all the children boards, all the group boards associated with that under here. These boards do expire. There's an expiry date with it. So please be careful. It expires in two weeks. So you can extend the expiry by clicking this button and it'll extend it out by a month. Right? And you can go back to this board by clicking this view button or you can delete the whole class by clicking this. You can also create folders and move these boards into folders or as well if you want to, right? By uh, um, creating new folders and so forth. And there's a whole bunch of community boards. I think there are about 70 odd community boards that other teachers have contributed. You can contribute to our library as well, but you can walk, watch through and see what other teachers are doing with whiteboard.chat. You can search these community boards by using the search bar on the top here as well. Uh, can teachers share their boards with their uh, yes, co-teachers? That's a good one. So in the manage books, again, there's a whole bunch of new options here as well. So you can send a copy. So if you say, hey, I want, I've created this awesome board. I want to send it to all the uh, same level grade teachers in my school. You can just copy this link and send them to uh, send it to them in an email. And as soon as they click it, it'll open a new board. It'll create a copy for them so that they can use it in their class really easily. Right? Or you can actually um, publish it to our community. We do take some time to go through the board to make sure its um, content is good before we publish it, but you can publish it to the community as well. 
you can clear all pages so if you click this what will happen is it will clear all the objects uh, of all the teacher boards as well as the student boards you can clear the student pages only and you can clear the students and their pages as well so these are all uh, options that teachers have asked us to add so that's why you see some some of them which are a little bit duplicated there's a built in time machine as well which i should have shown you in the last time but um, but you can actually see uh, how so for example in the, on this board i can run the time machine right you can do that on any uh, child's board as well right so if i were to go back here manic book and you can say time machine you can see what this board look like in terms of time and you can play it back from the beginning to see when things were changing on that board as it was progressing right so there's a uh, i should show you on a student board maybe that's better so some teacher has done something i can do that here uh, sorry said is there any more questions as well yeah there's a question about uh, pages how do students know how many pages are there on the board uh so right now they don't know if they keep doing next it keeps adding pages to their book as well so we can uh, teachers have asked us like two of three three or four right uh, they have asked us to say how many total pages there are and not go beyond that and uh, so is I it possible is it possible for them to open the page numbers panel Uh, or the no, page selection panel not right now other teachers have asked us to enable that for the students as well but they remember they can drag and drop stuff around they can delete stuff around we don't want that so um yeah, we'll add it to make okay. it read only uh can that uh, can the coordinate planes be moved or resized uh not right now so the coordinate planes are uh, pretty fixed you can always get your own coordinate plane and make it as a background if you wanted to right um, there is another option that um, you can upload pdfs directly from like like there is this website called dad's worksheet which has a lot of worksheets on it math worksheets right so if you were to look for um what's it go away okay this is not good let me turn off ad blocker okay yeah so you can upload your own uh, really easily from anywhere right so this one has a coordinate plane here you can see graphing paper for example or a coordinate plane let's look for a coordinate plane right you can just take the link of any of these things right and then you can say uh, go to whiteboard dot chat Right, and you can go here and say under manage book, say upload linked PDF. I can directly load that in here, right? And then you can add it to your palette as well, right? You can add it as a object in your palette so that you can subsequent. Again, I'm doing this on the student board. Yeah, but you get the idea. You can add objects from the internet. You can paste images, upload images. and add them to your palette so you can use it subsequently can i draw a line with the uh, arrowheads on both sides not right now again that's another thing that our teachers have asked us to do we will add it uh, so, yeah sorry quite uh, no i'm i was just going to say so uh, i'm going to stop recording right now so it's uh, the top of the hour so thank you for attending if you want to stay like i said we will we'll be here for 30 more minutes so we'll continue talking with you but if not again thank you for spending your valuable time with us if you need a pd certificate email dhawal or uh, email feedback at whiteboard.chat and we'll give you a certificate as well um, but again please engage with us this platform is made by teachers is not us they made it we just implement what they ask us to do that's all we do